Hi there, Defog. Welcome to 2017. Um, this is our first recording in 2017. And um, wow, I have got so much material to get through to you in the next month or two from all of the travels that I just recently did down in Australia. Today, I would like to talk about specifically the 35 millimeter focal length. It is a very, very difficult focal length to work with. If you're a landscape photographer, you're probably going to say that 35 mils isn't wide enough for you. You want something a little bit wider. If you're a portrait photographer or fashion photographer, you're probably going to say that it's too wide and it distorts what you are looking for. Why exactly it exists and what its niche is, I am not too certain. What did happen with me though is I absolutely fell in love with it while forcing myself to use it. It was very difficult to start off with. It makes you work incredibly hard because it's an in-betweeny. I ran around city streets. I ran around the middle of absolutely nowhere in some breathtaking landscapes. And I was constantly drawn to try it because it offers something really magical that's recognizable. It's, it's not quite quantifiable, but there's something to it that while I was busy looking at it, I found myself very drawn to it because it almost offered me what I miss from working with my old medium format film cameras. You could get these wider perspectives that weren't really distorted. And it's something that's recognizable for me, especially if I see a fashion image inside a small space like a car, for instance. And I know that's been shot on, on, on a medium format camera because it's unmistakable the close intensity and the proximity you invade personal space with a medium format camera, yet it still feels true. It doesn't give you that unrealistic, distorted perspective that a very wide lens gives you on a 35 millimeter camera, on, on a regular DSLR. It's something for me uh, and other people who've shot with medium format cameras will immediately recognize. Now, that's what I was getting out of this 35 mil. It's not too wide to distort horribly, and it's wide enough that it does invade the personal space sometimes and it gives you this close proximity and it almost ignites that sense of, of touch. Um, in, in film and film theory, when you learn about cinematography, you learn a lot about the psychology of different lenses. So if you really want to be in your face and you want to suffocate someone, you're in there with a, a, a wide lens and you're very close to the subject matter the whole time and you're forcing this claustrophobia and this, this proximity. Whereas if you want to be very objective about something and create the psychology of being impartial, then you observe from a distance. So you use a much longer lens and you just look at a situation being played out and you allow the viewer to decide for themselves what's right in the situation, what's wrong in the situation, what's happening, what should happen. So you get these objective lenses and, and then you get these very subjective lenses where the cinematographer or the director of photography, the DOP, will force a director's vision on the viewer and that's usually done with these wide lenses and I found that that's what the 35 was giving me. I found it to be incredibly intriguing when it came to fashion. Counter to everything that I thought going on this trip, I thought I'd be using my 85 a lot more that I always use. Those of you that follow us will know that. But uh, I found myself loving the 35 for its storytelling power. It doesn't distort too much for me, as you'll be seeing from a lot of the images, but it's wide enough to offer more story. So what happens when you go traditional and you've got an 85 mil on is that I'm focused in on my subject. I'm narrowing the perspective and the field of view so it's all about the subject. 
and the 35 it's about the subject in their environment there was one shoot in in particular that i did in a caravan park and i wanted to bring that type of lifestyle and obviously just embellish the thoughts of this tacky caravan park lifestyle which it wasn't at all but you know it's about storytelling so that's what you're trying to to embellish over there i think my shots with the 85 failed miserably whereas my shots with the 35 started communicating story and more and more what i found myself doing while traveling against most people's advice is I traveled quite heavy and I loved it. I wouldn't change it for a thing. I was petitioned by many people to not be foolish and to rather just take a lens, a standard lens, like a 24, 105 or something like that, that would cover a whole range of focal lengths. And one person, thank you, Marcel van Aswegen, one person said to me, do what you always do and do what you know is going to make you happy don't have regrets afterwards so what i always do is i always do this and what i really wanted to do was i really wanted to do this okay so in this particular shoot in the trailer park uh, you'll see from my 85s they they lack personality and the lack of personality comes from lack of story to clarify lack of story Basically, you're becoming an investigator. What objects or places or spaces are in the background of a photograph or surrounding the subject in the foreground that tells more of a story about this character? Which this little beauty over here really, really gave me in abundance. 35 millimeters is a storytelling focal length. So what I went on to discover is that the 35 mil is a great partner to something like an 85 on a fashion story. If you're shooting a story and you're fortunate enough to be in a good location, this is definitely something that you want to do to combine um, the classic elegance of a longer lens with the storytelling capability of something like this 35. I'll review the lenses in follow-up videos, but all I want to get across in this video is for me why the 35 exists. In the beginning of this video, I said to you that it's an in-betweeny and I don't know why it exists. It's not wide enough for landscape people, it's too wide for portrait people. Well, I really think that as a, I'm not sure if it's really a reportage lens, I, I didn't shoot it that way, but in terms of a reportage style of fashion, I think that's its niche. It is absolutely, for me, the best storytelling lens or focal length, I'm not speaking specifically about this lens itself, the focal length of 35. I'm a prime person. I love using primes. Um, it's very seldom that I'll use a zoom. And as a prime, I've found a new love. I used to shoot, or I do shoot 50 a lot, and I do shoot 85 a lot. I think I'm going to find myself shooting so much more 35 for its storytelling power. I guess that's a wrap on this one. Please have a go at it. If you don't own a 35 Prime, force yourself, get, it, get some super glue, take that 24-105 of yours, fix it to 35, and go and force yourself to shoot that focal length and get to know it. It's difficult, but it's really, really rewarding when you get to know it. That is all for today. Best storyteller ever. I will bring you more from around the wonderful country of Australia um, in some follow-up episodes. See you again next week, Defog.